Well, good afternoon, friends. Good afternoon, or should I say good morning or good evening, depending on where you are. Um, welcome. Uh, thank you for joining us for another episode of um, Conversations with Dune and Friends. Uh, today we have a, a real special guest joining us uh, all the way from uh, Calgary, Alberta, folks. Uh, that's way down there, hey? And uh, um, Mr. Chuck Rose is joining us today for uh, an hour and a bit. We're probably going to run a bit longer because neither of us have uh, meetings right afterwards. So we'll probably uh, yak on a bit longer. But let me uh, do a, a quick introduction of uh, Mr. Chuck Rose to you before uh, we uh, uh, bring him on here. So Ch Chuck Rose has been uh, a human jukebox, a human jukebox since uh, he was a wee lad. And uh, he loves to play Stumped the Musician. and. Uh, uh, he usually wins. Um, Chuck began singing uh, professionally when uh, the Beatles were still together, and uh, he still plays regularly at pubs and private functions all over Alberta. With a repertoire of over 3,000 songs, did I say over 3,000 songs, folks? Um, he knows the hits from the 50s, the 2000s, and, and so on. And, and uh, if the crowd knows it, Chuck probably does too. Now he loves to get uh, the crowd singing along, and uh, and so he gets uh, uh, so get ready to uh, belt out your own favorites along the way, folks. We're gonna show a lot of uh, video clips as well, and uh, so Chuck is also a seasoned presenter and and leadership seminar facilitator. Uh, he works with organizations to inject more fun and magic into their meetings and conferences. Now he brings a fusion of stories. Uh, music and real world leadership insights from being an entertainer and, and a restaurateur and uh, to help organizations bring teams uh, together and build them and, and also develop leaders. Um, so with that introduction, folks, uh, join me in welcoming our guest today, Mr. Chuck Rose. Wow. And the crowd went wow. How are you, my friend? I'm well, doing. Good to see you. Good to see you, sister. You know, we, it takes uh, typically a CAPS convention or a CAPS meeting for us to see each other. So this is great that we're seeing each other outside of that context. <laughs> yeah. Can you? Uh, I, I mean, I, I have been not going to CAPS for a while, mm -hmm. but um, someday soon I'm going to go back and uh, have a visit with all my friends there. Yeah, so yeah. Log in my throat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's better. Yeah. So, uh, uh, great. Well, wonderful. Now, um, I'm assuming that our viewers can hear us. So uh, probably no news is good news when it comes to uh, let me just check it with our viewers. here. We have uh, a few on. And uh, so if you could uh, confirm, that would be awesome because uh, this show is a little bit better with um, audio. Now, I see Chuck has um, just disappeared from the screen there. He'll come right back, I'm sure. And uh, so... Um, you know, internet being what it is, you never know what the internet um, gods are going to do while we're on uh, on air here. So, so hopefully, Chuck, you can come right back here and, and join us. And uh, let me just uh, send a quick message out to Chuck here as well on the uh, uh, messenger. All right. So um, now, Chuck and I, we. Uh, we have a, a few things in common, of course, music, as you've heard, and that's one of the things that uh, that um, we share, uh, but also uh, speaking and training and, and uh, really leadership development and things like that. So uh, we, we have a we have a lot of stuff uh, to share with you folks. And so I'm hoping that Chuck will uh, come right back here. And, and while we're waiting for Chuck, what I'm going to do is I'm going to perhaps, um, you know, maybe share a, a video um, uh, of Chuck here in action. And uh, so, um, yeah, why, why don't we do that? Why don't we go ahead and show a video of, um, uh, I think I'm going to show this one here. Um, now, is he back yet? No. Uh, uh, I don't see Chuck back yet. So maybe his internet is really problematic over there or something. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and, and share a, a video clip um, uh, of Chuck here so you get a sense of uh, who it is that you'll be hearing from uh, today. So um, let me start with this one.
Here we go. Let, let me just share that. All right. Well, let's um, let's enjoy some of uh, Chuck's uh, performance here. And good evening, ladies, gentlemen, and the rest of you. I, I see a few familiar faces here tonight, and a whole bunch of people I've never met before. So for those of you who have not had the pleasure of meeting, my name is Chuck Rose, and I'm here to play some tunes for you. Just so you know, I know thousands of old songs and absolutely no new songs. Stan Rogers songs. Oh, for just one time, I would take the Northwest Passage to find the hand of Franklin reaching for the Beaufort Sea, tracing one more line through a land so wide and savage, and make the Northwest Passage to the sea. Okay, now I've had a request to do. 
do a song that is one of the great sing-along songs of all time. And it only works if you guys sing it. Fantastic. That was a lot of fun. Um, thanks for joining by us again uh, back, uh, Chuck. I know internet uh, issues can be sometime uh, kind of elusive, but uh, good to have you back. Isn't, isn't modern, modern technology, technology wonderful? wonderful? I, have I have no, no idea, idea why my, 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 my camera, camera out, out, why why everything is, and, and I, I have no idea, idea why I back. Yeah, yeah. So great. Well, great to have you back. And did you change it to 720 for us, I Sarah? It, it just wonderful. Just Wonderful. So um, tell us, uh, maybe you can give us a bit of an expanded uh, kind of introduction beyond the introduction there. Tell us, uh, you know, from the, the age of, well, as you call it, the, when you were a wee lad, you got into music. Uh, give us, take us through that journey, uh, well, musical was, journey. I was old enough to even remember it, but mm. I remember singing along with the, the songs on the radio from when I was a kid. And mm -hmm. My favorite was Perry Como back in the early 50s. 50, mm -hmm. 55 is the earliest memory I have. Uh, you know, hot diggity, dog diggity, boom, what you do to me. I loved that stuff. And I knew every word to the songs when I was three years old. And my mom tell, told me that when I was three, you know, it, it, people always ask little kids, what do you want to be when you grow up? Mm -hmm. I wanted to be a singer. Oh, wow. And I was fortunate enough to have that come true. Yeah, yeah. Well, you have done a lot of different things. Tell us more also about the restaurant business that you've been running, uh, the name of it and how long you ran it. And uh, you're now kind of you sold it and sort of moved on from that. But but that was many decades as well, right? Well, I started in the restaurant business in 1975 as a part time waiter. Mm -hmm. And um, from that time until three little over three and a half years ago, I was always involved in some version of the hospitality industry, mm -hmm. either, either as a, a, a bartender, a pub owner, a, a pub entertainer. Right. I was always involved in some aspect of it. And I finally sold my last pub in 19, I mean, sorry, in 2017. Mm -hmm. um, and that was when I had the longest. I actually, I, I owned the Hose and Hound pub in Calgary for uh, 21 years. Yeah, uh, wonderful place. I, I still love it. I, I uh, my memories of that place were amazing. The people I met, the customers, the staff. It, uh, it was a great time in my life. Mm -hmm. um, I, I miss parts of it. I'm I'm really glad I'm not in the restaurant business right now because I I don't know how people are going to cope with COVID nineteen. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, retirement came at just the right time for me. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Oh, great. Uh, thank you for sharing that. I know uh, some of our viewers who are either in uh, Calgary or even in Edmonton who maybe used to live in Calgary or frequent there uh, probably know of um, of the restaurant that you've been running in the pub and all that there. And uh, so if you do, folks, chime in and tell us about your experiences with the place along the way as we uh, listen to uh, Chuck here over the hour in a bit. Now, Chuck, is there a way to just bring your volume up ever so slightly, even if uh, you need to point your microphone directly at, uh, you know, kind of direction? That 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 might yeah. also yeah. Let, let's go with. It. I think so. Uh, so um, tell us about the other aspect of your work as well. You work with leaders and and, and organizations. Uh, uh, obviously, you bring your music and you bring your restaurant experience into that. Tell us about that as well. Well, I've I've been uh, I was for many years a, a professional public speaker, mm -hmm. and I would um, talk about things like staff retention mm -hmm. and. Um, um, controlling costs and things like that. And the way that I always emphasized for people 
was that you will get what you expect from people mm -hmm. and you will get not what you want, mm -hmm. but who you are. Mm. And I said this to so many people over the years. Um, if, if you're a jerk, mm -hmm. expect your people to be jerks. Exactly. If you treat your people with respect and kindness and expect the best from them, but deliver the best to them as well, mm -hmm. give them the best of you, they'll give you the best of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've, I've spoken to conferences and, and businesses and lots of places where they've asked me to come and just, they, they want me to liven things up with music mm -hmm. and give a little bit of a message. Sure. And, and I love doing that. I, I get people singing along. I get people doing, I, I get crowds of people singing harmony. Mm -hmm. Most of them would swear they had, they could not sing or carry a tune, mm -hmm. but I get them singing in harmony. And when they hear themselves harmonizing, wow, what an amazing thing that is. Mm -hmm. An exercise in teamwork yep. and a whole lot of fun. Yep. And it's just, it's a great time. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that's, that's great. Do you know, uh, as we all um, talk about, uh, you know, when it comes to speaking, uh, the, the more of the keynote speaking you do, the more it's about emotions and not about content anyway. Um, you know, as you, you know, you're up there for an hour and really you're trying to create some emotions that would cause people to maybe take action that they kind of knew already. You know, you're not really giving them anything new, but hopefully you motivate them to actually uh, make a change in their behavior, right? It's all about the stories. Mm -hmm. People, people are hardwired, I think, to love to hear stories, mm -hmm. and and they might they might not remember any of the lessons that you want them to to take home, mm -hmm. but what they will remember is the story that illustrates the lesson. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the, the the whole thing is about finding those great stories, fun stories, make people laugh. Mm -hmm. When people laugh, when people sing that opens them up to receive a message. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know that. I mean, you, you're a wonderful yeah. musician yourself, so you mm -hmm. know uh, all about how the power yeah. of music. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you, we have a lot of different uh, clips to share with our viewers. And, uh, you know, perhaps the first thing I want to do uh, from a background perspective is to share, share some of the photos that you sent. So what I'm going to do is, is bring up some photos and, and you tell us a, maybe a bit of a story behind the photo. And that would be a fun way to kind of ramp up here for, for our kind of conversation. Now, the first photo I'm going to show is uh, the three of us doing uh, what appears to be air guitar. Tell us about that. <laughs> well, uh, we, I'm just bringing it up here. <laughs> of course, you and I know each other from the Canadian Association of Professional Speakers mm -hmm. and uh, CAPS, as it's called. And every year, CAPS has their annual convention. And since, you know, we're, we're three hours apart by car, we don't see each other very often, but once a year, you and I would see each other at the CAPS convention. Mm -hmm. Every once in a while, we got to make music, mm -hmm. and sometimes people would sort of line up and say, hey, you guys, play air guitar for us, and then take a picture. I don't even know who took that picture. <laughs> I don't know either. To me, and yeah. um, I, I was pleased to see you. The, the guy in the middle, is he the guy that's, that does the thing about turning off your cars and not... You bet, Ron. Ron, idle free, idle free. In fact, yeah. that, is, that is his green shirt right there. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What what a what a, a neat niche market for that guy. Mm -hmm. but anyway, um, uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, how do, how well does your audience know you, Dune? Do they know what a great guitar player you are? <laughs> they know I have fun with guitars and I have a lot of guitar faces. So yeah, we we have fun together. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. So this is your is it uh, kind of professional speaking thing or is it music thing? That's a, that's a headshot for my professional speaking. Yeah. Uh, and I had that taken at one of the conferences. I think that was, I think I had that one taken at the Nova Scotia one, the Halifax conference. Halifax one. Years ago, what, yeah, we were all sociable there in Halifax. <laughs> yeah, what a great time that was. It was fun. It was fun. And it was out of that conference that I met Les Kletke mm -hmm. and Les helped me write my book. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can, can I? Oh, absolutely. Why don't you grab it and I'm going to yeah, feature my book. Yeah, no, no, we're going to do this. So then you can actually show it and we can actually see it. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what, I'll get, I'll just reach over and grab a copy here that I can. You bet, you bet. Yeah. 
will grab a copy and there you go. Uh, if you move it to your uh, right a little bit more, to your right a bit more, perfect, perfect. Now uh, up a little bit so you can see your name there, Chuck Rose. And uh, yeah, so the book is called... Um, uh, Dish Pit to Dining Room. Yeah, yeah. And, and tell us... What's the central theme of the book? Obviously, it's, it's about that, but do you have it through a different, a certain lens, or? Yeah, it's all it's all about my adventures and my stories from the restaurant business and the lessons I learned, mm -hmm. the people I met. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm doing a Tim Bright up. You know Tim, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you bet. Tim Tim says always hold your book next to your head. Mm -hmm. And that way, if they take a picture of your head, they're going to get a picture of your book as well. Did Tim say anything about not covering up your name on your book with your <laughs> index finger? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. Awesome. You it so that it's not uh, reflecting light at the camera. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful. Well, thank you for sharing that. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, awesome. that was the conference. That, that, and we had a blast at that conference. Where I, yeah. you, you actually got up and played. Yeah. Um, an instrumental piece on a song that yeah. I had just written. Yes, yes. I uh, I uh, accompanied you, and then, uh, yeah, that was fun. And then uh, one of those evenings, uh, myself and uh, our band called Elevation performed for the group there at night. We rocked it out uh, pretty yeah. good, some classic rock. So uh, let's uh, continue here with some... Uh, uh, so this is your... Uh, is this at your pub there? Th that picture is was taken at the Rosen Crown in Banff. Okay. Yeah. Um, and you'll never guess who took that picture. It was David Saxby. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Nice. You know David, of course. Yeah. And um, that was a picture that we took for promotion purposes for the music promotion. Mm -hmm. well, it's a great photo. Love the lighting. Love the color. Um, just, just awesome photo. Yeah, David did a nice job, and that's the, and that's of course the picture for the cover of the uh -huh. um, of the book. Yeah, I saw that. I see that. And yeah. again, taken at the Rosen Crown in yeah, yeah. on my on my phone camera. Oh, nice. Yeah. Well, you know, it's all about lighting and composition, and and uh, you know, camera is one thing, but yeah, yeah, you're having lots of fun there. Yes. I have no idea who took that picture, but <laughs> I, I know when it was. Yeah. Um, every year. For the last 20 years, I've done a tribute to the music of Stan Rogers. Do you, do you mm. know Stan Rogers' music, Dune? I do. I, I do. Not as well as you do, but but I do, yeah. Well, I, I've done a tribute to keep his memory alive mm -hmm. and also as a fundraiser. Mm -hmm. uh, last year, we did it as a fundraiser for um, the youth leadership programs at the Calgary Public Libraries. Mm -hmm. And it, it, we just, I get together with a bunch of other musicians who love the music of Stan Rogers mm -hmm. and we get together and sing it and have a ball and invite all our friends and all the people who love Stan Rogers music. Mm -hmm. We packed out the Ironwood this last year mm -hmm. and uh, I think we raised about almost five grand. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Good night. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I've seen some of your uh, Facebook live uh, um concerts that you've been doing lately and uh do you do that weekly or how often no, do you do that? when when i i'm i'm kind of a what's the word i i i'm i'm lazy <laughs> <laughs> but i'm also a, a creature of impulse mm -hmm. so when people say hey chuck we haven't heard you for a while let's get a group together and we'll have a online concert and I say, okay, well, here, I'll tell you what, here's the time I'm available. Let's get everybody together. And mm -hmm. one, of the, one of the beauties of this whole thing was that um, uh, between the help that you've given me and mm -hmm. the help that another friend gave me, the, one of the ones who, who wanted to have a concert, mm -hmm. um, they even delivered to me a special cord that hooks up my PA system to my camera. Mm -hmm. I spent half an hour, no, probably two hours, trying to get all the sounds to sound right mm -hmm. on a Facebook Live video. Yeah. And I, I think, now, we got it fairly decent. Mm -hmm. And then with the help that you've given me in the last couple of days here, mm -hmm. um, my next one is going to sound a whole lot better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, <laughs> glad to hear. Glad to hear. You, you know, uh, you here you are having more fun. Uh, it seems like you like those ovations, hey? Is that right? I, I do. I love the Ovation acoustic electric guitars. Mm -hmm. I, I don't really like the sound of them acoustically. 
Right. But through a PA system, I think they're dynamite. Uh, oh, yeah. I, 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 that was one of the first guitars I had and still have, except I left it in the basement near a heat register and you know what happened. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah the strings are un dismounted now from the. Yeah. yeah. Well, I oh. still have the first one that I ever owned. Mm -hmm. um, actually, I, sh I shouldn't say I have it because I lent it to David Saxby. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it's it's still technically mine, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it's got cracks and and all mm -hmm. kinds of things. But it still plays like yeah, they are guitar. fantastic plugged in for sure. Yeah. There's an artistic rending of their similar photo. Yep. Mm -hmm. I love it, love it. And here's your book in full. Mm -hmm. If you could not read it before with the camera glare, now it is right. in the yeah. And 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 the person who posted that picture was a. Uh, a Toastmasters friend of mine. Mm -hmm. who, and he was he was the one who helped me organize the Stan Rogers tribute this last year, mm -hmm. and um, he made some very nice comments about it that uh, indicated to me that he'd actually read it. Mm, it nice. <laughs> you know, when, when you, you, like all kinds of people will buy your book, will take your book home and put it on the shelf, and uh, as as I've heard it called shelf improvement. I, shelf improvement. I am guilty of that. I still have uh, a couple of books of, of President Clinton, uh, USA uh, President uh, Clinton, that I have not read yet. Yeah. <laughs> he even signed it for me. You know. Oh my God! Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I have a photo. I have a photo, a photo shoot session with him where we shook hand. It was a high resolution photo. It was pretty cool time. But uh, yeah, he was in Edmonton. Well, he's so, a good speaker. Yeah, he's an awesome speaker, awesome speaker. And this is a beautiful photo of you. Tell us about this photo. Well, the, the, the beautiful woman in the middle with the funny hat on mm -hmm. is my lovely wife. Mm -hmm. And we were in Phoenix, Arizona, for her to attend her graduation ceremonies, mm -hmm. uh, the presentation of her doctorate. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the guy on her uh, left, uh, right, is uh, my brother-in-law who lives in Phoenix, and he, mm -hmm. he, the three of us went and celebrated her doctorate, which, wow. which she got. I Wonderful. Think three months after she retired. Which wow. Yeah. Nice, nice uh, accomplishment. You know, after my MBA, I said I would do my uh, doctorate thing, and then I got a Facebook account, and then you got it all busy. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> well, those That's are great wife, photos. The little old blue-haired lady. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you for sharing those with us. And uh, I know that uh, you mentioned the CAPS convention uh, in Halifax. I do have a video clip of you there that we'll show later. But uh, um, so, so tell us in terms of the, uh, what's your, uh, you're kind of in retirement now, I, I presume, and enjoying it a lot and, and sort of put, putting time wherever you feel like it, that there's no schedule that you have to live by week by week or day by day, I presume, right? Yep. Yeah. So um, now, when was the last time you did a Facebook Live concert? Was that a week and a half ago or two last weeks ago? Friday, mm -hmm. I went to, I, I, my son and I decided that we, we could socially distance within the same room mm -hmm. and um, have a, a live online kind of request, take requests. I love to harmonize with my son. It, it's one of the joys of my life is to harmonize with him. Yeah. Um, used to get to harmonize with my my son and my daughter but she li she lives in regina and we don't get together anywhere near often enough mm -hmm. um but i still get to sing with my son fairly regularly yeah and um so we did I, you know all all the harmony songs that we love to do the simon and garfunkel the everly brothers we threw in a few originals and uh, he harmonizes on my originals i get to harmonize on his yeah um it's a joy to play it, if you want to harmonize a plug for him it's ben rose and you can find him on facebook under cafe rose mm -hmm. uh, check his videos out some of them are brilliant i think i could be biased He's, he is my son <laughs> so i was just gonna say that uh, i'm just looking up cafe rose as we speak here as well and i was just thinking you know in terms of uh, harmonizing with uh, your daughter who is in another province through COVID time here um I could actually show you a trick of how you could do that, but we can do that offline there. But mm -hmm. but you can actually do that live. She would be live, and you'd be live, and you'd wow. be harmonizing. 
I want I want to do that. So before yeah. we part company, let's look. Yeah, I will show you how to do that. Uh, okay. It's not what you typically think of, but it does work. It, it does work quite well. All okay. right. Yeah. So now you you mentioned Cafe Rosé. Um, I'm assuming I'm going to just um, assuming that this is the correct one. Uh, Cafe Rosé. Uh, the, the banner is uh, sort of white with black letters and whatnot. I I, I uh, I'm just going to bring it up. Is this the right one? That looks like mine. Well, then let's. Let's take a quick look. Yeah, no, no. You just, just can you see it? I can, I can see, see it. it. That's, that's, your son. that's your son right there. Um, is he left-handed or is just the uh, uh, it's video a, camera a, thing? Uh, it's the iPhone thing. Okay, cool. Uh -huh. um, yeah, wonderful. So you got uh, some other musicians in the family. You're not the only one into music. Yep. yep. <laughs> cool, cool. And, and, and the next a grandson um, um, in Regina, Regina. my, uh, my, my daughter's, daughter's son, son is uh, learning, learning the guitar, started to make things. Mm -hmm. He's a talented guy, guy too. too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, wonderful. We have some guests here chiming in. Let me just uh, bring their comment up so that you can see them. Uh, Michelle, one of our regular, regular viewers. Uh, uh, Michelle says, uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, can you see that on screen? Yeah, I can. I can. Okay. I, you, I expect that before the end of today, you're going to show me exactly how to do it. Yeah, and yeah. I'm going to call up my daughter and say, hey, let's do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, wonderful. Well, well, thank you, Michelle, for chiming in. And thank you for watching, Michelle and folks. Uh, so, so Chuck, tell us more about uh, one of the clips that you, um, you have uh, sent me here. Tell me which one you like to bring up. I'll be happy to bring it up. Uh, I can tell you what they are if you don't have it in sort of top of mind. Um, do you have one top of mind that uh, that you want to show in terms of video that uh, um, that's coming up next? Well, I don't think you want a seven minute long speech, do you? I, there, well, we will watch some of it and we can cut out any time. So whatever you like, um, we're flexible. I had a ton of fun speaking to the people at Caps Calgary right. a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I did a, a speech called um, The Nose Job. Uh, yeah. Have you got that one? Yeah, I got that one. I'm and, 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 you know, just the first few minutes, couple of minutes would be fun. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm queuing it up now. So, uh, yeah, okay. here it is. Uh, let me just do the technology. So maybe give us a quick introduction before I, uh, while I would work on this. Well, as you uh, have, may have gathered from my conversation here earlier, I'm, uh, a, I'm a Toastmaster as well. I mm -hmm. love the organization Toastmasters. I think it's, um, um, it, it teaches people how to communicate respectfully with mm -hmm. others. Mm -hmm. And I love that. I think it's a, a, an excellent organization. And they have contests every year. Mm -hmm. And this uh, speech that I gave at uh, CAPS was one that I had used in a Toastmasters contest, and I did fairly well with it. I, I, I won the club, the area, the division, and when I got to the district, I came second with it. And uh, the people at CAPS said, well, let's hear it. So <laughs> the next CAPS meeting, I got up and did it there. Right. And somebody was kind enough to record it and send it to me. Yeah. And... Uh, if you if you've got it there, uh, it starts with Brian Lee actually giving you some of the information I just gave. I think. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm going to uh, to share it here. So so give me a second to uh, go ahead and do that. Sure. And uh, see if uh, can you see this? There's Brian. Brian. Yeah. I'm going to roll it, and I might uh, if uh, if it echoes or something like that, I might mute your mic. Um, that would be the reason why I do it. But I'm going to say watch the whole thing, Chuck. And uh, your video there, if it's uh, sort of sitting in any sort of uh, covering anything, I'll take it out temporarily. Okay. Uh, but for now, uh, you'll just be watching and, and reacting there. So so let's let's uh, roll this clip here. We have lots of music clips to share with our viewers, but uh, let's go into some speaking side of things too. Here, here we go. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Chuck Rose. I just turned 59 years old. And as I'm approaching the halfway point in my life, <laughs> it reminded me of, of one of those old sayings. Plan like you'll live forever. Live like there's no tomorrow. 
What if there was no tomorrow? What if today really is all we have? What would you do? You might say, Chuck, it's easy. Max the credit cards and party like Charlie Sheen. <laughs> I'll tell you what I do in a little poem that I've written, and I call it Here Now. There's no place I would rather be, and nothing I would rather do than be here now, sharing this moment with you. And it matters not just who you are or where here might be, as long as we're here now, that's enough for me. It wasn't always like this. If you'd known me 15 years ago, you would have known a complete workaholic. I was more concerned with growing my restaurant business than I was with living my life. If you'd been there two days before Christmas, 1996, you would have seen something that changed my life forever. I was delivering a, a catered Christmas lunch to a, a main floor office with plate glass windows all across the front. The receptionist said, Chuck, you're late. Let me hold the doors for you so you can get the food in quickly. She held the doors. I ran out to the van and I grabbed a tray of food, came back in, put the tray down, back out to the van, grabbed another tray, about 10 times back and forth, grabbing trays, putting them back in, and everything went perfectly till I was on my way out for the last tray. I was so focused on where I was going, I completely lost track of where I was. And I ran, full tilt, face first, into a plate glass window, bang! When I came to my senses, I was lying in a pile of broken glass with gashes all up my arm and blood pouring down my chest. I tried to stop the bleeding by grabbing the biggest cut that I could see and, and holding on tight. One of the office workers could see what I couldn't see. He grabbed a clean napkin. He knelt down beside me, reached down to the edge of my mustache and picked up my nose. <laughs> Put it back in place. And then got me to hold it there. Well, by this time I could speak. The first thing I said was, is the food okay? <laughs> I was more concerned with the food than I was for myself. I lay there in the foyer giving them instructions how to set up the hot trays, where to put the decorations. Somebody came in and said, Chuck, the ambulance is on its way. We called the restaurant and we spoke to your wife. Her first question was, is the food okay? <laughs> now, now I know I'm a bit strange, but when I'm in an accident in pain, my first reaction is to think that I'm somehow the funniest guy in the world. When the paramedics arrived, I acted out a scene from Monty Python for them. We've come for your liver. <laughs> no, I'm still using it. Well, you signed the consent form. <laughs> One of the paramedics said, Mr. Rose, are you aware that you have cut off the end of your nose? I said, it's only a flesh wound. <laughs> We were halfway to the hospital before the paramedic realized that I was at least, well, I wasn't just delirious. I was trying to be funny. And he started, he started to joke back with me. Well, by the time we got to the emergency ward, we had our routine all worked out. He, he wheeled me into the emergency ward with my legs strapped down tight to the gurney. The triage nurse came over, looked at me holding my nose in place, and said, what seems to be the problem here? I said, I can't move my legs. <laughs> the paramedic undid the strap. I wiggled my knees and I said, it's a miracle, sister. <laughs> Later on, the paramedic said, Chuck, do you have any idea how lucky you are? The last time I was called to a broken plate glass window, the victim didn't bounce back like you did. Her head went through. 
and a hundred pounds of glass came down like a guillotine. It took a while for that to sink in. But when it did, I realized I came this close to never meeting my grandkids, to never holding my wife again, to never having the privilege of being here now, sharing this moment with you. Are you here now? There's a wonderful quote from one of the great philosophical movies of the 21st century, Kung Fu Panda. <laughs> the sensei says, the past is history, the future a mystery. Today is a gift. That's why we call it the present. So are you here now? I hope you're not stuck in the past beating yourself up over something you regret. Or maybe like I was, so focused on the future that you can't enjoy today. Maybe you're so focused on the future that you can't see that plate glass window right in front of your nose. There's no place I would rather be and nothing I would rather do than be here now sharing this moment with you. Thank you for sharing that. That was uh, fantastic. I did not know about that story, so that this is new to me as well. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, when 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 was that exactly? Um, well, well it was, I was fifty nine. So, so that that's fifty nine years ago. Wow! Wow! So um, yeah, yeah. Thank you for sharing that with us. Um, now, in terms of the uh, the music that you do these days, uh, is it the same as music you did uh, when you first got into music, or ha has it evolved over the years? Tell us about your evolution, if there was one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. When, when I first started out as a musician, I, I wrote some songs. I tried to be an artist. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I, honestly, looking back on it, looking back now, mm -hmm. those songs were not very good. <laughs> and... I'm, you know, it's not surprising that I didn't succeed as a recording artist. Mm -hmm. But what I was good at was entertaining a crowd. Mm -hmm. I remember my dad said something to me when I was just starting out. He said, musicians are really a dime a dozen. Mm -hmm. Entertainers are hard to find. Mm -hmm. And I think you, you've experienced this too. There are lots of people who can play beautifully. Mm -hmm. But after the second or third song, the audience wants more than just beautiful music. They mm -hmm. want entertainment. They want you to make them laugh. They want you to draw them in somehow. Mm -hmm. and there are great artists who can do that just with their voice. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I mean, I look at people like Celine Dion. Mm -hmm. she, she has amazing pipes. Mm -hmm. uh, not, a lot of it's not my style. A lot mm -hmm. of it's not... But, but she can do an amazing thing with just her voice. Mm -hmm. um, and then you get people like, well, at the time, my hero, when I first got, when I first decided I wasn't going to be the next Kenny Rogers, mm -hmm. my hero was Kenny Rogers, mm -hmm. who'd write his own songs mm -hmm. for the most part. And um, he was the consummate entertainer. He told stories. He made people laugh. He, mm -hmm. he didn't just get up on stage and play his songs. He was an entertainer. And mm -hmm. that's who I wanted to copy or felt like I was most like. So for the next 20 years or so, mm -hmm. I focused on, on learning songs, becoming, because I, I knew I wasn't going to be playing the Jack Singer um, concert hall. I was mm -hmm. going to be playing pubs. Mm -hmm. So I focused on becoming the best pub entertainer that I could be. Mm -hmm. And I got to be, you know, fairly successful at it. Mm -hmm. I, I made a good living for many years. 
um, did quite well at it. Mm -hmm. It does get to the point, as I'm sure you know, when, when you're playing music that is not inspiring to you, mm -hmm. you get to the point where playing the music becomes a job. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, it's time to get out of it. Mm -hmm. Because so that's what, what happened to me was after 13 years performing in pubs, I got to the point where if I had to play American Pie one more time, I was probably going to shoot somebody and it might have been me. <laughs> and yeah. uh, that's when I got out of playing in pubs and got back into the restaurant business, which I had been in back in the 70s. Mm -hmm. And I uh, um, got back into the restaurant business. Just I, I, uh, Long story, but uh, very, very quickly, I became a partner in a restaurant called Green Street mm -hmm. here in Calgary. And we made a success of that. And then we opened, then we bought the Hose and Hound. Mm -hmm. And we had a great deal of fun with that. And then there were a few others along the way, some not so successful, which, you know, the, the stories that you learn the most from are the ones where you don't succeed. Mm -hmm. And uh, so probably half of my book is stories from, restaurants where I wasn't succeeding. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I've had a, a few successes, a few failures, enough successes that I'm able to retire now, which is great. Hey, some of uh, some of our friends love that show called, uh, is it Bar Makeover or Bar Rescue or something like yeah. that? On, do you know the one, ep the one I'm talking about? I do, yeah. I have, you seen, have you seen some of those episodes and are they anywhere near reality? Um, somewhat, and, and especially in the fact that Many of the people who who get their bars rescued mm -hmm. don't have success afterwards. Mm -hmm. the The guy comes in, changes everything for them, mm -hmm. and when he leaves them on their own, they go back to their old ways mm -hmm. and they fail again. Yeah. And I think there's a, a a huge lesson in that. How you do anything is how you do everything. Mm -hmm. um, people who who got into that mess in the first place mm -hmm. are probably going to do it again. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the, there are a few of those bar rescues that actually succeed. Mm -hmm. uh, the bar business is notoriously fickle. Mm -hmm. What today's um, today's huge success is next year's has been mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, to, for to to have a place that is actually successful for year after year after year after year. Uh, that's a whole different mindset. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I have to say there's, there's, there's elements of it that are hard work, inspiration, creativity, and there's a big part of it that is just luck. Mm -hmm. You've got to be in the right place at the right time with the right product. Yeah. And if you can do that, the restaurant business can be very good for you. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that the statistics are that four out of every five independent restaurants will fail within two years. Hmm. Wow. So it's not, uh, people would come to me so many times and say, well, I want to do what you've done. Mm -hmm. I want to take my money from my settlement for, or whatever, and I'm going to start a pub. Mm -hmm. And I would say to them, don't. <laughs> um, here, here's the thing. If you want to work in the restaurant business, mm -hmm. get a job in the restaurant business mm -hmm. and work in it for at least six months to a year, before mm -hmm. you ever consider investing anything in it mm -hmm. and see if it's something that you just love doing mm -hmm. because you got to love it. You've got to love waiting on people. You've got to love serving people. You've got to love people mm -hmm. and you got to love them at their worst because right. when people are hungry, that's when they're at their worst. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, Hey, I have a, a clip here that I want to show, and uh, it's just a few seconds of, I think, uh, audience uh, participation that is indicative of the uh, the shows that you put on. I'm thinking about the MVI uh, 9303 there that you've sent. Yeah. So I'm going to share um, just, just this clip here, if we get, could go ahead and do that. So uh, let me uh, bring it up and uh, uh, tell me if it's the incorrect clip, but, but I think this is the correct clip, right, uh, Chuck? Uh -huh. So uh, let me uh, just go ahead and uh, hit play here and... Uh, We'll enjoy this. Oh, 
Lots of fun, hey? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Because when I called on the audience to uh -huh. do the backup piece, yeah. they came through so uh -huh. nicely. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's no microphone on them. They had to be really loud for my microphone to pick them up. Mm -hmm. I just, to me, when an audience gives back to you as much as you're giving to them, mm -hmm. it's just, wow. I, yeah. I love it. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's fantastic, fantastic. Uh, so, so tell us, um, um, how many songs, I, I know you said you, you discovered that writing song was not your thing. How many songs have you written before you discovered that? How, how many did it take for you to realize, you know what, I'm a much better human jukebox than I am a human, uh, what is it, songwriter? I'd written, dozens. I'd written dozens of songs. Mm -hmm. um, and I, a little candid thing here, I, I was married before my current marriage mm -hmm. to a, a wonderful songwriter. Mm -hmm. who wrote way better songs than I did mm -hmm. um, and uh, sang them beautifully. Mm -hmm. And she inspired me to try and be a songwriter. But really, I, I don't, I mean, I've written a few songs that I'm fairly proud of. Mm -hmm. I've, I, I would say maybe five songs in my whole life that I'm proud of. Mm. And um, I, out of, the, out of maybe a hundred songs that I've written that are like embarrassingly bad. <laughs> and then I've got ideas for more songs. I've got songs that I are halfway written in my head that are, I've just got to discipline myself to sit down and actually write them. Mm -hmm. You do, you don't know whether something is a good song or not until after it's done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, I, I have to say that I, I did write it uh, out, out of, of, out out of, of the hundreds of songs I've written, written maybe, maybe four, four or five, five six, six good, good ones. Yeah, I just wanted to see this because I thought it was such a neat. Tell us about this clip before we show it. just a, a few seconds of it. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's a bird eating out of my palm. palm. There. Hmm. Wow. Let's let's take a look. And then another one comes by. You're getting a reputation there. You're building trust in the in that particular uh, <laughs> flock. <laughs> I, 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 I love, love where I live. live. That's, That's it's about. about to Three, three blocks, blocks, four blocks, blocks the way, way far I live. live. Mm -hmm. and, um, it's, it's, it's beautiful. beautiful. You, you, you go out, live, live, and there's, there's this big, big, like, basic, basic open, open nature, nature right, right there, there four, four blocks in my house. Yeah. Love nice. It. Nice. Nice. So uh, now, it just uh, take us back to current day. So uh, right now you uh, you are retired and sort of enjoying the uh, free time and, and freedom of time to do whatever you happen to uh, kind of choose each day. Uh, you do a musical live stream uh, once in a while, concert. Uh, when you do that, how long is it? And is it an hour? Is it an, uh, keep going until you're kind of tired of it? Do you have a schedule? I know you don't do it regularly every week or anything like that, but, but when you do, do you aim for a two-hour thing, one-hour thing? The, the last one I did um, by myself, mm -hmm. I, I promised I would do two hours. Mm. And uh, at the end of two hours, it felt like it was enough. <laughs> that, that's something that when I have performed in bars and, and uh, clubs and places, they have, some of them have a set schedule of when they want you to take breaks. Yeah. And I don't really do that very well because if I'm having fun, I want to keep going. <laughs> yeah. And the longest set I think I ever did was probably three and a half hours. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I started, I was having fun. I hadn't had enough liquid that I had to go to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. And I uh, suddenly I looked up and it was this closing time. <laughs> oh, okay, I've got to <laughs> stop now. And then I realized how full my bladder was. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but hey, when I'm having fun, I don't want to quit. That's, um, that's 
That's great. But I sent a lot of my fun comes from the audience. If the audience is having fun, mm -hmm. I'm probably having fun too. Yeah. And so um, if the audience, if I sense from the audience that it's time to sort of, oh, okay, we've done this enough now, then mm -hmm. either I take a break mm -hmm. or I end the show. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I was having a, a ball on that last uh, um, live Facebook show. Mm -hmm. It was fun. Yeah. It was. After and after uh, two hours, it was like, okay, that's enough. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, tell us which one of these clips would you like to share next? There's one called Quitting Time, one called We Are One. I wouldn't change a thing about you. Win or walk away. Which one should we queue up uh, for our viewers next? Well, I guess for some of our viewers, it's probably quitting time right now because <laughs> we've been on for an hour. Yeah. Um, no, we, we we said that both both you and I are going to go on well beyond our hour, so we're going to keep going, uh, Chuck. Okay, because well, let's not do quitting time. Yeah, we let's not do quitting time. The end. Yeah. Um, the the one called um, I wouldn't change a thing about you. Mm -hmm. the one that I wrote um, mm -hmm. for my wife after I I don't I don't know. Are you are you in a relationship, Dune? I am uh, married with two uh, kids. I've uh, been with my wife in 30 some years now. And uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I've been with my wife. Uh, we had our 34th, 34th wedding anniversary just mm -hmm. two weeks ago. And um, I'm starting to think it might last. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, I, I I don't know if you've ever had a fight with your wife that lasts like into the wee hours of the morning where, you know, you're not talking and then you try and talk and you're not talking. And it's like, you know, I, I have, I have, uh, but thankfully I have wisened up over the years and uh, that has not happened for years and years, but, but uh, it used to so happen. This, yes. This happened a few years ago and um, it was about four in the morning when I realized that I was wrong. <laughs> that's that's you know, pretty good turnaround some you know sometimes it takes uh, months and months and months or years even right and, and when i realized that i was wrong one of the things that i was wrong about was i was trying to change her i was trying to make her different mm -hmm. and the lesson that i was getting out of it was i can't change her but if i change me mm -hmm. everything else changes mm -hmm. And so I, I, this song came out of it. Um, well, yeah. it sounds like we attended the, the same session there, my friend, because I, I had that lesson as well early on, and uh, well, very helpful, very helped. helpful lesson. This is the song that you uh, you played lead guitar on in mm -hmm. Halifax. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! Thank you for reminding me because I wasn't sure what the uh, song was. Uh, I, I just jam along as you knew, right? We, we just, yeah, you invited me upstage and I just jam along. Uh, well, thank you for sharing that. Let me just bring it in here and uh, <laughs> let me take my, uh, we're gonna play the entire clip. So uh, we're gonna go like that and we're gonna. If I could make myself a better man. Now, is it only left channel with the sound there? Uh, could do you be, know? Could be, yeah. No, 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 no. Okay. I, wa I wonder if I can help it. Let me just see here. So it's going sending direct. Because it's sending direct, and I notice it's only going to the left channel, could I manipulate it somehow? Um, let's see. Well, I'll play it, and I'll, I'll mess around with it as it plays, okay? Yeah. yeah. If I could make myself a better man, I'd be strong and brave and so much more secure. If I could make myself a better man I'd never stand in judgment My heart would be pure You never have to be ashamed Of what I do If I could change myself into a man Who's worthy to have you But it wouldn't change a thing About you If you were different from the way you are you might not love me like you do I wouldn't change a thing about you If I could make the world a better place I'd make a world where everybody could succeed If I could make the world a better place I'd do away with hatred, violence and greed If I could change the world, fix whatever's wrong Make a world where everybody 
you the thing you belong But I wouldn't change a thing about you You were different from the way you are You might not love me like you do I wouldn't change a thing about you Now if everything's connected If the universe is one And everything's affected by whatever I have done I can make my tiny difference Like a raindrop in the sea And the world will be a better place When I'm a better me So I can make the world a better place If I can only be a better man myself If I choose gratitude and grace I learn to put my fragile ego on the shelf So I know just what I'm setting out to do Starting now, I'm changing everything Everything but you Cause I wouldn't change a thing about you If you were different from the way you are You might not love me like you do change a thing about you. No, I wouldn't change a thing about you. You were different from the way you are. You might not love me like you do. I wouldn't change a thing about you. No, I wouldn't change a thing about you. Fantastic. Hey, is that the guitar that you uh, you shared with me uh, in, uh, was it Halifax that you brought it? Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I just got, got it. it. And I didn't, I didn't bring, bring it to Halifax. One of them, going, going back, back to the Asian cars, cars that I played, yeah. I love the fact that, that you can you control, control with one and be fairly, fairly sure it's going to show up on the pieces of the other end. Yeah, yeah. Because they're so straight. Yeah. Now, now your vocal is cutting in and out, kind of fitting in and out a little bit. I don't know if it's the internet that's causing it uh, that way, but but we'll just be mindful of it. But uh, yeah, <laughs> I'll try to speak as clearly and as 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 I possibly can. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, you know, all the technology is that double-edged sword, right? It's fantastic when it works, but then when it goes flaky on you you just have to kind of put up with it and just uh, kind of accept it i suppose um yeah so thank you for sharing uh, th that clip with us and uh um we got time so so don't worry about wrapping up uh, anytime soon uh, we, we got another 20 some minutes yet here where we'll, we'll ramble on and we'll share with uh, the viewers um uh, now and who, who tune in later in the replay uh, more music for sure but also more of your story. Uh, do you have a story that that sort of is top of mind as you think of all of your music uh, performances? Um, a story that is funny or, or kind of strange or, or sticks out that's memorable that you want to share oh, with our viewers? So many stories. I mean, <laughs> I, 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 you've been performing in front of audiences forever. Mm -hmm. You know that audiences do the weirdest things. Yes. And and I can I could tell you so many stories. There was. There was a thick picture that I wanted to send you. Mm -hmm. Lovely, lovely person who used to come to a, a gig that I, I, I played at the Rosen Crown in Banff every Monday night for 17 years. And there was a beautiful young woman there who came in wearing a, a shirt that she'd had made. Mm. I heart Chuck Rose on it. <laughs> yeah. Send a picture of that to you, but I, I thought, no, that's kind of, but the things like that happen, and you think, oh my God, this is fun. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm making people happy. You know, uh, as the saying goes, uh, you may be a small piece of this world, but you might be a significant piece of somebody's world. And uh, whether it's through music and, and whether it's only on a Saturday, whether it's through the week that they're able to maybe take their life challenges a bit better because they have that release on a Saturday, you never know, right? Something, something that I would like to share with you that happened, I would say probably 10 years ago, maybe yeah, around 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. I, I was reading a, a book. I'm sorry, I can't remember the name of the book right now. But anyway, it, it, in it, there was talk about people 
energy field. Mm -hmm. And they, they, they had scientific background for this that said they can measure their brain waves mm -hmm. several inches away from your head. Mm -hmm. they can waves. Yeah. They can measure your heart waves up, mm -hmm. up to 20, 30 feet away. Wow. And I started doing this, this sort of visualizing exercise before I went on stage. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget that what happened. What, what the visualization was that I'm shining the light of my heart to the room mm -hmm. and I'm loving everybody in the room, just filling the room with love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was amazing the difference that happened. Now, how many times at the end of the night in a bar does mm -hmm. some drunk come up and say, I love you, Dune. <laughs> you are great. I love you. And and I would get that a lot prior to this. Where at the mm -hmm. end of the night, people, I love you, Mr. You know, no. oh, thank you. That's lovely. <laughs> it started happening after that. Was in the first set, mm -hmm. the people were drunk. Mm -hmm. I get people, sober people coming up to me and saying, I love you. Mm -hmm. In the middle of a set. And I'm like, what? Mm -hmm. Oh wow, this is working. Yeah. <laughs> I was loving them and they were loving me back without even knowing why, what mm -hmm. was different. And I just thought that, that there's this power of intention mm -hmm. that comes through. Mm -hmm. I, I, was, I was blown away by how my caring about them mm -hmm. and, and sending this energy to them mm -hmm. was making a difference to them, yeah. the way they felt about right. Yeah. Happening. Yeah. Well, you know, when you when you started talking about the sort of the uh, vibration or the the energy that's um, resonating from your heart and mind and, and head and things like that, yeah, a funny example I I, I think of uh, quite different. But uh, remember back in the eighties when we would play um, electric guitar and we would get radio signal coming through and we get some radio broadcast coming through our guitar amplifier. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's radio interference, right? Yeah. Same, same thing happened when they first started doing the cordless microphones, the headset microphones. Mm -hmm. You could have that where <laughs> suddenly your your headset is picking up signals from all over the and that's oh the the technology is so much better now. Yeah, yeah, but but really, so the boundaries that we have as uh, sort of human beings are a little bit less uh, cut and dry than we might have imagined. Mm -hmm. So when you think about hugging somebody, yeah, we're talking about those energy fields, um, you know, colliding right there, right? I mean, we're we're in that close proximity. My sons, one of my youngest sons, uh, actually graduated from high school just um, yesterday. Was actually his graduate uh, graduation ceremony. We went to the school and we did the whole COVID protocol thing here. We did uh, video and all of that kind of stuff all COVID style but you know um, when he was young um, and we still do it to this day and we still continue to do it he says um, dad I, I researched and, and, and it says that you need eight hugs to maintain health and he's 12 for growth and so every time I would hug him he would count and so at the end of the night he'll report back and they say I got 13 hugs today and you know that was the game we play right mm -hmm. and so the idea of uh, you know when, when I tell to this day anytime I come home from anywhere even if I go out for five minutes and come back we would hug you know just just everybody would just hug and we just get that done and uh, we get back to our normal routine after that so anyway hugging is uh, definitely uh, obviously something that we're mindful of with covid right now but but when when it does return it's a very powerful thing isn't it that's one of the things i miss the most right now is being able to hug people mm -hmm. I, I can still hug my wife which is nice mm -hmm. yeah yeah yeah. So uh, tell us about, uh, I want to share another clip, uh, but but perhaps when we share that clip or before you share the, we share the clip, maybe you can tell us a story about it. Now, we, we had a few choices here. Uh, some of the, the YouTube that you sent here, uh, for example, we have the uh, quitting time. We are one. Maybe we are one. Is that a good one to show now? Sure. Yeah. yeah. So tell us about we are one. How You wrote that one, didn't you? I did. Yeah. Tell us about that. Well, um, I had a wonderful experience of... Um, I went to a songwriting workshop down in California. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard of a musician named Freebo? No, I have not. Okay, well, check out. I've Freebo. heard of a guy named Fabio, but that's that might be a different guy with the long mm -hmm. hair. No. <laughs> well, Freebo had long hair at one time too. Okay, there you go. So Freebo is a, a, a folky musician, uh, plays acoustic guitar, and writes 
gorgeous songs, absolutely gorgeous songs. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's also a bit of a public speaker. He, mm -hmm. he does a, a musical show where he speaks, speaks and sings in the song, song with messages. Um, um, and he's, he's the one. And he was songwriting shop in California. And I went, I went to, I spent, spent a week down, down there. there. A bunch, a bunch of really, really interesting people, people. and one, one of us, us would write, write record, record a song. And, and I had this, this wonderful experience. experience. One, one of the things that they did, did for, for helping, helping us get into this was they took us into Sequoia National Park. Park. And, and we, we sat, sat in, in the midst, midst of these, these thousands, three thousand year old trees, trees three hundred tall, 3,000 3, years old, old and, we and we just felt the majesty of it. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I felt, felt almost like I had a conversation with a tree. Mm. And, and it, it was, was like, like, it was saying, let's just talk about that. that I've got a spoken word about, about that. that. I could do that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, your your um your voice is cutting in and out slightly, so I'm gonna roll the clip. And uh, I don't know if there's anything. Is it the internet thing that's um, interfering with it, or is it something? <laughs> it's clear. Yeah. Okay. Then let me just play, and hopefully it clears up by the time we come back from that. Uh, so let me go ahead and play it here. Do you know who you are? Do you care? There's so much in our hearts we have to share And the light in our soul keeps on shining like the sun I am you, you are me, we are one We are all one spirit, we are all one heart We are all one together we are even one apart We are one in our soul And together we are whole I am you, you are me We are one Who are you on your own? Do you know What's still there when you let everything go? If you find who you are When it's all been said and done I am you, you are me, we are one We are all one spirit, we are all one heart We are all one together, we are even one apart We are one in our soul and together we are whole I am you, you are me, we are one We are one with the seas and the flowers and the trees We are one with the future and the past We are one everywhere and in everything we share And the most important question we can ask Is who am I at my core? Who are you? Are we more than just the things we say and do? The answer's been around forever and it's only just begun I am you, you are me, we are one We are all one spirit, we are all one heart We are all one together, we are even one apart We are one in our soul and together we are whole I am you, you are me we are one, I am you, you are me, we are one. Fantastic. Now, is this one of the uh, songs that you referred to as before as being uh, one of the songs that you're proud of? Because you should be very proud of this one, my friend. Yeah, yeah. This, this is, is one, one I'm proud, proud of. of. Yeah. I, I did, I did work, work on this one. one. Yeah, you did the work and it, uh, you know, I, I would say this is a timeless song, you know, the title is timeless, the lyrics are timeless, 
and, and the music is awesome. And, uh, you know, as much as timeless it is, it is very much appropriate to what's happening in the world today, right? I mean, it is a, a very uh, powerful message. Yes, I, 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 I felt like the message, this is, one, this is one of those songs where the message came to me. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, um, it, it was like it flowed through me. It wasn't my song, it flowed through me. Mm -hmm. um, and I felt that I really, I, I, I listened. I was able to listen and get what yeah. was there. You know, it sounds like, I'm going to loop back to what you said earlier. You said you kind of like going with the flow. You kind of like, uh, you know, um, doing the live concert when it strikes you rather than saying, I'm going to do it weekly or, or every uh, month or whatever. And this might be along that line of it really came to you rather than you saying, I'm going to write my next song by next weekend or something like that. And it becomes work, right? Well, it, it was it, it was one of those things where I would, I do work with deadlines too. Mm -hmm. So on the one hand, I love it when I get to do things off, you know, impromptu. That's great mm -hmm. fun. But when somebody says, you have to have something done by this date mm -hmm. here, I need it by here. So can you do this? And I'll say yes, and, and I'll do it. Mm -hmm. um, there's another song clip that I sent you called uh, Win, Win, Win or Walk Away. Yes. And yes. Uh, um, that was a, 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 you know, David Savage, a uh, member of Caps Calgary? Yes, yes, of course. Yeah. Uh, David came to me and said, I, I would like to have a theme song for a show that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Would you write this theme song? And he gave me a copy of his book and we, we read through the book and, and um, came up with some of the concepts of, of what he was talking about. And he had a deadline. Hmm. So I worked with this deadline and you, you might notice if you listen to this clip that I, I use a very different voice, voice for, for it. Mm. I, I, I felt, felt like, like the, the voice, voice was right, right for this, which should sound sort of like, like Tom, Tom Waits singing up a positive song for a change. change. You know, you know, I, I love Tom Waits, but, but he's so, so dark. dark. And, and I, I want to take the sound of Tom Waits and and to something on a positive side. So anyway, anyway, uh, I wrote this song for David Savage. Uh, it sums up, and he actually helped with the lyrics, and um, he used this as his theme song for a uh, internet, um, what do they call it? internet blog thing, a live a vlog. Anyway, yeah, win, 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 or walk away. Being an analytical guy that I am, I have figured out why your voice was fading in and out. I'll tell you later, but uh, I know okay. how to manage it now. So okay. we got it. <laughs> Is it fixed? Oh, uh, it's fixed. It's fixed. And I know how to prevent it as well. So great. All right. Here we go. Um, let's take a listen to this. You've got to win at any cost No golden rule, no line you haven't crossed Who cares if Mother Earth's in tatters You're the only one that matters Sorry buddy, you've already lost I have a dream that there's enough for everyone And it's not about who's lost and who is won it's so simple, it's so wise No defeat, no compromise It's the future, it's already begun So find a win, win, win or walk away Everybody wins or find a better way No exceptions, no excuses No one wins if someone loses It's a brand new game and that's the way we play Confrontation's a mistake that we've outgrown I know I'm better off with you than on my own When we change the way we start The intention in our heart Makes us more than we could ever be alone The whole is greater than the sum of all the parts It's a game that we've all won before it starts So let's choose the very best together we'll break through when we lead with love and follow with our hearts 
so it's a win, win, win or walk away. Everybody wins or find a better way. No exceptions, no excuses, no one wins if someone loses. It's a brand new game and that's the way we play. It's got to be for everyone, it's not for just a few. The only way that I win is if you will win in two. It's more than economics, it's not taught in any schools. This game of life is ours, and we're changing all the rules. So find the win, 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 or walk away. Everybody wins or find a better way. No exceptions, no excuses, no one wins if someone loses. It's a brand new game and that's the way we play. So find a win, win, win or walk away. Find a win, win, win or walk away. Find a win, win, win or walk away. Fantastic. <laughs> I, uh, when did you write that particular one? Was that, it, that right? When did you write this song? Um, How long? It was probably about three years, years ago. ago. Yeah. Maybe four. Yeah. Um, and um, David Savage's book, Breakthrough to Yes, that's one of the lines in the song. We'll, together we'll break through to yes. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's yeah. a wonderful book about yeah. negotiating until everybody wins and yeah. that he, he he wants to get rid of the idea that you go into a negotiating frame i'll tell you who he really really does not like the negotiating strategy of donald trump mm -hmm. donald trump goes in and says i'm going to ask for the moon because what i really want is um you know i'm going to i'm going to take the I'm going to go way further than i actually expect to get Mm -hmm. And then I'll get more than I really want. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, yeah. the idea of finding situations where what what I do is good for you and what you do is good for me and mm -hmm. we both win. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of negotiating strategy that the yeah. world needs right now. Yeah, yeah. You know, I teach a lot of negotiation courses as well, but Mr. David Savage is the negotiation guy in around these uh, parts here of Alberta and around here. He's uh, very much focused on it, and he, he he does a lot of work with a lot of great people in that area, yeah. negotiation and, and, you know, win-win negotiation and collaborative uh, agreements. The word I was going to say, collaboration is what it's all about. You bet. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, enlarging the pie rather than just focusing on dividing up the pie, right? Enlarging the pie. Uh, yeah. I mean, what, what a, what a, a, a wonderful soul he is. Mm -hmm. So anyway, uh, that, that, that uh, song came out of um, the, the wonderful time that uh, David and I spent to work on that. And uh, I, I'm, I'm pretty pleased. The, the, the tune isn't exactly what I had hoped for, but the mm. lyrics are pretty much exactly where I want them to be. And I love how you did that special voice for it, because if it was just any kind of uh, the typical voice, sort of the middle of the road, it wouldn't be as special as that. Now, uh, who would you say that voice would be uh, similar to? If you think about all the popular singers out there that we all know from country or whatever, various sort of genre. Is there well, the, the person who I had in mind was a, a combination of Tom Waits and Leonard Cohen. Oh, oh yeah, of course, Leonard, of course, yeah. And I, I, I mean, I love Leonard Cohen uh, for a guy who can't sing. Or <laughs> couldn't, he's not, he's passed now, but for mm -hmm. a guy who couldn't sing, boy, could he sing. Yeah, yeah, hallelujah. I listened to that and it's like, wow. There, there's a, there's a, a verse in, in the song Hallelujah that was in the original recording of it. And mm -hmm. no, no, none of the other people who've covered it have ever used that verse. And it, it goes, um, um, oh, you say I took the name in vain. I don't even know the name. Mm. And if I did, then really, what's it to you? Mm -hmm. and it's just like, ah. Oh. <laughs> But it, but it wouldn't work in Katie Lang's voice. It wouldn't work in in uh, um, yeah. Yeah. 
so yeah. many of the people who've covered that song so beautifully and they mm -hmm. wisely left that verse out because that's Cohen. Mm -hmm. right there. Oh, yeah. I, I, I get shivers. So many of his songs make me shiver. They're so yeah. beautiful. So I hope you keep on writing a lot, my friend, now that you have more free time and in, in, in your retirement, because uh, as much as you've discovered early on that, that, that uh, you know, writing wasn't your core thing and you, you went on to being a human jukebox with uh, over 3,000 songs in your repertoire and, and, you know, performing and entertaining, well, that's all great and that's wonderful. But now that you're in your retirement, maybe songwriting uh, resonate with you a different way, maybe. I, I've been I've started toying with a few ideas and and um, I've, you know inspiration comes quite often in dreams mm -hmm. and when I wake up I'll write down a little snip from the dream mm -hmm. and one of these days I'm gonna get my discipline happening that mm -hmm. says okay we're gonna spend an hour every morning working on mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. and that's I mean when people like you tell me they enjoyed what I did. It inspires me to want to do more. So it is awesome. It is, you know, and these days, uh, now that we have the ability to uh, reach out to people beyond our typical circles with the web and uh, to know that people who may be watching and listening who we don't even know who, who we might impact in a positive way if we put up there, you know, right? So that's, that's very motivating, I think. Yeah, for sure. Uh, when I when I did the um, two hour uh, Facebook Live, Mm -hmm. a couple of Saturdays ago, mm -hmm. I was blown away because by the end of the day, it had over a thousand people watching. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't, I, I expected 30 or 40. I yeah. didn't expect yeah. to see. And, um, and I, I think it's up over 1500 now, which for me is like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you're used to people in the room. You're, you're used to numbers that equates to people in the room. And uh, with this web thing, yeah, it's uh, it's a very interesting phenomenon. Yeah. I, I've been playing, just before the COVID thing hit, I, I, I started playing fairly regularly at a, 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 a restaurant here in Calgary called Blowers and Grafton. Mm -hmm. You guys have got a Blowers and Grafton in Edmonton too. Um, and it's the, this place has a capacity of 42 people. Mm -hmm. 42 people and it's full. So when I sit down in the corner and start to play, mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm having like a, a private conversation with everybody in the room. Mm -hmm. And it's beautiful. I love that. That's just, um, yeah, food's good there too. Yeah, intimate setting. Hey, uh, tell us uh, the next clip that we, you want to show. I have a few options. I have Quitting Time here on YouTube. I have uh, uh, what Chuck Rose 2012 or 606 uh, from a MP4 that you sent. Uh, let's, uh, let's, let's go to, I, th I think it's Quitting Time anyway. So let's. Quitting Time. All yeah. right. Let, let me queue up Quitting Time. And then uh, after that, we will uh, chat some more and wrap it up. So uh, okay. uh, here is Quitting Time. And I'm going to bring it in here. Okay. There's a song about addiction and uh, how hard it is to quit from the lighter side. I'm tired of all my hard-earned money going up in smoke. When I paid my bill down at the tap and grill, I was just this side of rope. And now you've gone and left me after spending my last dime. But I've come to my senses Now it's quitting time And I'm gonna quit drinking and smoking And I'm gonna quit missing you I'll give up my booze and get the patch And accept that we are through I'm gonna bank my pain and join in Find somebody new I'm gonna quit drinking and smoking Doctor, I told him I was ill. My lungs have spots and my liver shot, and I can't afford his bail. And my broken heart is aching. The way you left me was a crime. He said, Pull yourself together, son. 
don't you know it's quitting time So I'm gonna quit drinking and smoking And I'm gonna quit missing you I'll give up my booze and get the patch And accept that we are through I'm gonna thank my pay and join AA Find somebody new I'm gonna quit drinking and smoking So I stopped back at the tap and grill just to tell my friends I'd quit. Or I stunned somebody bought me one. And I was drinking it. Then I bummed the smoke, and man, that first puff was sublime. But when I'd had a few, I started missing you. And now I know it's quitting time. So I'm gonna quit drinking and smoking. Through. I'm gonna bank my pay, join a yay, find somebody new. I'm gonna quit drinking and smoking, and I'm gonna quit missing you. I'm gonna quit drinking and smoking, and I'm gonna quit missing you. Fun, fun, fun. <laughs> so when did you write uh, this particular one? Oh, I wrote that probably 10 years ago. Yeah. yeah. Maybe, Maybe a little more. more. I don't know. I, 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 uh, I, I would end my sets, sets when, when I play, play in pubs. pubs. I don't, I don't almost end in my, in my in the evening, evening of that, that song. And in Banff, where I played on Monday nights for 17 years, it got to the point where almost everybody in the audience knew it. Mm. And they would all sing along with me. I wish I had a recording of that mm. with, with them singing the back, uh, singing behind me. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was just tons of fun. Yeah. 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 You know, it's uh, thank you, Michelle, for um, uh, commenting and uh, glad you're enjoying the songs uh, shared uh, by Chuck here. And uh, so, Chuck, as we round the corner on wrapping this up, um, uh, is there a story that is top of mind that you love to kind of uh, tell before we uh, wrap up with some sentiments here. Uh, give us one more story, whether it's music story, speaking story, restaurant story, any interesting story that's top of mind as you uh, think about it now. Oh boy, it's so hard to pick one. Yeah, <laughs> uh, there's, there's, you know, I've got ghost stories. I've got uh, um, uh, hero hero stories. Let's do a, a hero story. Mm -hmm. um, and this is a, I'll just do a quickie version of this. This is in my book uh, under characters that I've known. Mm -hmm. I met Crazy Eddie mm -hmm. in Regina. My first restaurant, we weren't even open yet. The, the doors were open because people were, deliveries were coming and we were putting the wallpaper up one day. We were expecting to be open within three or four days. Suddenly the door bursts open and this guy comes in with a, an entourage, basically, people following him. And he comes in the door and the very first thing he says, I can't repeat, but mm -hmm. the essence of it was, uh, who do I have to have sex with in order to get a cup of coffee around here? <laughs> and he proceeds to sit down at the one table that everything's finished at. And being the good host, I get coffee for them and introduce myself and whatever. Come around a few minutes later and suggest, uh, like, would anybody like more coffee? Crazy Eddie looks up at me and says, I'd love some coffee, but I'll settle for this crap that you're serving. Mm. He, he was obnoxious, unbelievably, but he became one of my most regular customers. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I, one of the things that I, I like to say about Eddie was that most people consider him to be a pain in the neck, mm -hmm. but I have a somewhat lower opinion of him. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, 
it was funny because over the next six months, year, mm -hmm. it got to the point where he was so obnoxious, whatever, but I couldn't believe how his, this guy had so many friends. Mm. And I asked him one time, I said, Eddie, you're the biggest jerk I've ever met. How is it that you have so many great friends? Mm. And he said to me, Chuck, if you want to have friends, you got to be a friend. Mm. And it turns out that at that time, probably half the people in Regina owed this guy a favor mm. because he'd, if, if you needed something, he would show up for you and he would make sure, make it happen. Mm -hmm. The number of times that he saved my bacon at that restaurant, my first restaurant, um, just because he knew somebody, knew somebody who could get you something. Mm -hmm. Or uh, he, he also happened to be the captain of the TAC team at the Saskatchewan Correctional Institute. He was a very powerful, you didn't mess with Eddie. Mm -hmm. And I can remember on, on two different occasions, I, a customer would be starting to get unruly mm -hmm. at, uh, at the restaurant. Mm -hmm. All that would have to happen is if Eddie was in the restaurant, he would stand up. Mm -hmm. The customer would look and sit down. Mm -hmm. There was one time when there was a guy who had just picked up a knife off the table. It was just a butter knife, but he was going to come at me with it. And as he was about to come at me with his knife, Eddie walked in the door. Mm -hmm. The guy saw Eddie and he sat down, put the <laughs> knife down and, you know, nothing had to be said. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he saved my bacon. I don't know how many times. Over the years, he became a really good friend. Mm -hmm. And when my wife and I got married, he stood up with me. Mm -hmm. um, and the biggest jerk in Regina is still probably my best friend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's 40 years later. That is a, a powerful story. Thank you so much. I'm so glad I asked because uh, that is an awesome story. And it reminds us, all of us, to, to not judge people for one thing that they do or, or one aspect of their life because their life often is more than just the one aspect or one thing that they do or one behavior that they exhibit. Uh, you know, try and give them an opportunity to maybe show the other aspects of themselves as well. And, and you can judge in the long run, but, but that's a great story. In Eddie's case, you don't just give him an opportunity. If you don't give it to him, he'll take it. Mm. <laughs> but yeah. he's, you know, he, 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 there's no quit. He never stops. Mm -hmm. And, um, bottom line is that you may not like him when you first meet him, but eventually you're going to want him to be your friend because right. he's that kind of guy. You bet. So, um, well, that's a powerful story. I, I don't know if I can uh, say anything that, that really isn't already demonstrated by the story that you shared. And, and uh, if anything, I just say it reminds all of us to, to just be patient with one another as we interact with somebody and, and we see the first impression being something or we see one aspect of them, uh, maybe wait around longer and, and maybe see the other aspects of, of that person before you, you make your mind up fully, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, thank you for that, that, that great story and a wonderful reminder. So, so as we uh, wrap this up, um, uh, is there, um, I'm going to ask you um, what I asked some of our guests, and that is, uh, are there three words that you like our viewers to, uh, to keep in mind as they think about this conversation that we've had here and uh, as they listen to it in the replay, what are the three words that you would like Tim to kind of keep top of mind uh, that, that, you know, is from you today on this opportunity? Yeah. Um, Two come to me easily. Mm. One is generosity. Mm -hmm. Another one is forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> I, I saw a t-shirt the other day. Patience mm. is a virtue, mm -hmm. which yep. I don't possess. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. But, but being patient with each other, patient, Okay, yeah. let's 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 get three three words: kindness, yeah, forgiveness, mm -hmm. generosity. Wonderful, kindness, uh, forgiveness, generosity. Well, thank you, uh, thank you for sharing those with us. And uh, again, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm I'm going to surprise you. Can I surprise you? I hope so. <laughs> Here's the surprise. 
I know you always play and sing with your guitar. Uh, I did say that this particular platform that I'm on doesn't translate well with guitar and vocal in the mix live and, and it has to decode and all of that stuff. They're hoping to catch that up in the next few weeks. Hopefully we'll get there. Uh, but uh, are you into acapella to just belt out something to take us home with a song without your guitar and just vocal, let your vocal shine on any song, a cover tune, an original, sing as long as you like, and when you're done, we'll say goodbye. Okay, well, I, I Stan Rogers, who is my musical idol, did a number of acapella songs, and one of my favorites is his song called The Northwest Passage, and this is it. Oh, for just one time, I would take the Northwest Passage to find the hand of Franklin reaching for the Beaufort Sea, tracing one warm line through a land so wide and savage, and make the Northwest Passage to the sea. Westward through the Davis Strait is there, t'was said to lie. The sea route to the Orient, for which so many died. Seeking gold and glory, leaving weathered broken bones, and a long forgotten lonely cairn of stones. Oh, for just one time, I would take the Northwest Passage to find the hand of Franklin reaching for the Beaufort Sea. Tracing one warm line through a land so wide and savage and make the Northwest Passage to the sea. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, thank you so much. You are one of the few guests that uh, is willing and able to pull that off right away here as I surprise you with that. So that's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Chuck, for thank spending you. the hour and a bit with us. And uh, I hope you had fun. And uh, I know our viewers uh, have enjoyed it. I know the viewers who watch it in the replay, as it will be on here forever on Facebook land here. And, uh, you know, as a link, you can share it on LinkedIn or wherever have you. It's just a video link. So, um, so yeah, thank you again. And uh, much appreciated, my friend. Thank you. It's a great time. You bet. So to our viewers out there, thank you for tuning in now and, and later. And uh, till we meet again, um, take good care of yourself, folks, and take good care of one another. And uh, uh, goodbye from uh, Mr. Chuck Rose and myself. <laughs>